Greetings loyal subscribers and honoured guests. We've reached the halfway point of Cover Tape Chaos Season 2, but fear not, I still have six more episodes to bring you and many more in the future. The plan is to go all the way up to Power Pack 64 and possibly beyond as Zap64 also had a ton of mega tapes that we could take a look at. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves though. This time I'm examining Power Pack 19 and unfortunately I believe it's the worst one yet due to some uninteresting content on the second half. I suppose we were always going to get a few off months where hot demos are thin on the ground. It's not all bad though as Mr Jeff Minter contributes two of his classic titles for us all to enjoy. The first offering from Mr Minter is Sheep in Space, where you pilot your fluffy buddy through level after level of alien aggressors. The very first time I loaded this up, I didn't have a clue what was going on and died in seconds, but after reading the paragraphs in the magazine and practicing for a bit, I started to get the hang of it and really enjoyed the game. The idea is to wipe out all of the enemies on the stage, and the stages themselves wrap around in a big loop. It's a lot like Defender in that regard. However, there are a few quirks to the gameplay that you need to be aware of. Because there are structures on both the ground and the ceiling, gravity will affect the angle of your shots. If you're in the middle of the screen, your bullets will shoot fairly straight, but the closer you get to the bottom or the top of the screen, the more your shot is angled towards them. Also, because you are controlling a little sheepoid, he will gradually get hungry over time. You don't want to leave him with an empty tummy for too long, or that will leave him without shields, so you need to look for grass on the top or bottom of the screen which you can land on and allow your sheepoid to graze until his tummy is full again. Finally, pressing the spacebar will jump you to the nearest alien, which is extremely useful for hunting down those last few critters. Overall, I really enjoyed this game, so maybe this tape isn't so bad after all. Bad. Next we have more Minter Madness with Attack of the Mutant Camels. If you've ever played The Empire Strikes Back on the Atari 2600, then this will be extremely familiar to you, because it is basically that game except with huge mutant camels replacing the Attack Walkers. This game is incredibly tough even when the collisions with camels are turned off, as they take a ton of hits to kill. At first I really struggled to kill all the camels on the level before one of them managed to reach the right hand side of the screen. Then I realised you, you could shoot them anywhere to change their colour and not just in the head, which I believe was the case in The Empire Strikes Back. I definitely didn't have as much fun with this one as I did with Sheep in Space. The game is a lot simpler without much nuance to the gameplay really. I should add that both of these Jeff Minter games have fantastic sound effects, the sort of thing that you would expect to hear coming from a Eugene Jarvis arcade machine such as Defender or Robotron. Great stuff. There are apparently 31 different skill levels to choose from in Attack of the Mutant Camels, but I struggled to get anywhere in the first one. Definitely not a bad game though, just a difficult one. It is at this point that the quality of the tape takes a bit of a dive, at least for me. I suppose it all depends just what you come to these tapes for. If like me you want to sample some demos of the latest games and enjoy some classics that you may have never owned before, then the idea of utilities starting to appear in place of these is not very appealing at all. So next we have a demo of something called Light Disc 64, essentially a magazine on a disc which features a bunch of different articles, reviews and software all through a rather nifty icon based interface. That in itself is something I'm very interested in and I've actually tried to find out whether the full version of Light Disc 64 was ever sold, but I haven't managed to find any trace of it unfortunately. If anyone out there does know about and perhaps even have a disc image of any of the issues, then I would love to take a look at them sometime. But anyway, the demo of Light Disc 64 on this power pack merely gives you an idea of how the interface works. There's no actual content to enjoy here, which makes it a bit disappointing when we could have had another game to enjoy. The fourth item on the tape is Aquabaster, a game that was submitted to Commodore format by a reader. Now I really respect anyone who actually manages to find the time to make their own game. I tried this myself a few times back in the day with the help of Shoot 'em Up Construction Kit, but I never had the skill or the patience to actually complete any of the projects that I started. So hats off to the chap who made Aquablaster for managing to do what I couldn't. 
Having said all that, the actual game is not all that great. It runs at a decent speed and the controls are fairly responsive, but I'm afraid to say it's just not that fun to play. When you have a couple of really blistering shooters from Jeff Minter on the same tape, it's kind of hard to compete against those. A very valiant effort though. Finally, something else that is a bit dull, but potentially useful for somebody. We have UDG System 2, which is a utility that can be used to edit the standard character set on the C64, so you can make a different font for your game, or whatever project you want to use it for. This is apparently an example of the sort of thing that would be included in issues of Light Disc 64. For the 15 year old me though, I just wanted to play some games, and so this would have gone over like a wet fart, only less entertaining. So ultimately I guess Power Pack 19 wasn't too bad, as the two shooters from Jeff Minter will keep most gamers entertained for a fair old while alone. The rest of the tape is not of the usual high standard really though, but again it depends what you want to get out of it I suppose. I will see you again for Cover Tape Chaos number 20 in a fortnight, in the meantime take care.